Okay, one last problem on investments and using the compound interest formulas. This time, I'm looking for the time required, T, for an investment to reach a certain value. And we're going to assume that I know the interest rate, I know the compounding schedule. In this case, it's quarterly. Okay, every quarter of the year, every three months or so, I'm going to get paid interest. I know the initial investment, 25000 and I know the final investment, 60000 So a scenario might be you're saving for a house, and you have an amount of money to put in here, uh, $25,000, and you want to know when this will reach $60,000 in your investment account, so you can dump that into a house down payment. Uh, and realistically, you'd be saving gradually for a house. You wouldn't just plop $25,000 into an account and then walk away for 10 years. You would be putting in monthly payments or uh, every year you would put in a couple thousand dollars and save for it that way. But that would be really complicated and we would need a spreadsheet to figure it out. For the sake of this example, we're just going to say we put in some money. We want to know how long it takes to get to a certain amount. So let's write down our formula. I'll do the discrete compound interest first. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. And now we plug in what we know. We want the account to be worth $60,000. We have $25,000 to start with. So the rest of these numbers are, let's see, an 8.1% interest rate is 0 0.081. And N, quarterly compounding, is 4. Uh, and then you have 4 in the exponent. And T, I don't know what T is, but we're just going to put that there. We'll solve for it. So now, what you have to do is sort of unwrap this equation one step at a time until we're down to T as our last variable. So I'm going to divide each side by 25,000. Okay. That's going to give me an idea of the growth of this thing. Um, and if all we needed to know was how long does it take to double, we could figure that out. Um, you wouldn't even need numbers on the left and right. You would just have... Well, I'll show you in a, in a moment. Hold on. Let's see. 60,000 divided by 25,000. Okay, so this is a growth factor of 2.4. Now, if this were an equation that said, how long does it take something to double, you could just use 2 instead of 2.4, and that would be doubling. Or how long does it take to triple? That would be 3. But in this case, we want 2.4. So now we're looking at this, and we have to we have to figure out how to solve this exponential equation. And hopefully you remember what we've been talking about recently. We're going to do the logarithm of each side. Um, is that right? Yeah, we're going to do the logarithm. Well, eventually we're going to do the log. For the moment, uh, I have another idea. Let's take each side and take it to the one quarter power. Okay, one quarter power. Need a little more room on this guy. Move over. And the reason I'm doing the one quarter power in the exponent is because I'm looking at this thing right here, this 4. And I want to get rid of that so it's just a power of t in the exponent. And the way I get rid of a 4 in the exponent is to multiply it by its reciprocal, 1 fourth. And you can do that as long as you do it on each side equally. So let's work through this and see what this is. 2.4 to the 1 quarter power is 1.2 Two, four, four, I'm going to put a lot of decimals on this, six, six, six. And on the right side, that one fourth times the four means this is what we have. One plus, you know what, instead of writing 0 0.081 divided by four, I'm just going to do the math on that one. And this is, let's see, 0 0.01 divided by four is 0 0.02025. To the t. So now we have to figure out how to solve this, and we're going to use logarithms. So I'm going to take the log of both sides, and we'll get into what the base is in a moment. Just write down all the numbers. And on the right side, we got log of uh, this thing. 1 plus, oh, I don't need to write 1 plus 0 0.02025. 0 I know what that is. It's 1.02025 to the t power. So what's the base on this logarithm that I should use? Well, um, if you remember how we generally do these things, and I'm going to need a little more room, um, 
when you have an exponential and you use a base that is equal to the base of the exponential, they're going to cancel out nicely. So here's what I mean. If you pick 1.02025 as the base of this exponential, it's going to cancel out with the base I'm sorry, the base of the logarithm will cancel out with the base of the exponential if we choose them to be equal with each other. And that's very convenient when you're solving these equations. Um, you can pick any base you want, as long as you do it the same on both sides. So over here on the left, we'll have 1.02025 as our base. And let's see how this works out. First, I'll calculate the one on the left. Now, if you have a calculator that handles bases, great, you just plug it in. But if you don't, and many calculators don't, you have to use the change of base formula, which is uh, the log of the argument, this 1.244666 thing, divided by the log of the base, 1.02025. And if I just say log and log, what that means to the calculator is log base 10. Calculators all know how to do log base 10. So let's just plug in log of 1.244666. I'm going to say divided by log of 1.02025. And I get 10.9173 equals, now we have the log of the right side. Well, let's go back to the right side. If you remember by the power rule, this T over here is going to go wee 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 over here and go into the coefficients of the logarithm, giving you t times log of 1.02025 with an argument of 1.02025. And when the base and the argument are the same, the whole thing cancels out, and the value is 1. So we just get, all of a sudden we're done, right? t equals 10.9173, and that's it. Now, if you're wondering what 10.9 is, that is... That is the number of years that it will take for this investment to hit $60,000 from the initial $25,000. And whoop de doo by the time you get to this amount, the uh, housing prices have skyrocketed and you realize you've been saving and your goalposts are moved and now you're going to be saving for another five years of work. Welcome to life. That's just how the market's going to go. Um, that's off topic. Anyway, this is how we find the time of investment. And I think we could do it the same way the continuous compounding interest, but we've been through that enough times by now. It, it's a similar calculation. You use the um, power rule of exponents and logarithms to solve it.